Pho is quite possibly the most renowned and beloved Vietnamese dish in the world, and this homemade pho might be the most authentic version. Now, when people think of pho, they're more likely to have tried pho ba, pho made with beef. However, Bos Taurus, the cow, did not come from Vietnam, but was domesticated from the Fertile Crescent. What is native is the water buffalo, Bubalis bubalis. In Vietnam in particular, it'd be the swamp type buffalo, although even that might be disputable since the domestication of such an animal purportedly happened in India 5,000 years ago, and in China 4,000 years ago. I have no idea whether they domesticated the animal in Vietnam itself. The wild water buffalo, Bubalis arni, is native to Vietnam, but is in fact extirpated, so you can't even find it there anymore. And I don't know about you, but here in Southern California, I can't find wild water buffalo meat in the grocery store, so forget about it. No pho cho. Instead, we're going to make pho ga, or chicken pho. Though lesser known, it's actually quite a popular version of pho, and guess what? Chickens were originally domesticated 8,000 years ago in Southeast Asia. Hooray! I'm going to be using two whole chickens and two carcasses to deepen the flavor of the broth, though this ended up being a mistake. We'll fill the pot with water, and we're going to bring this bad boy up to a sub-simmer and keep it there so that the chicken cooks gently. Too high of a temperature will make your chicken breast dry out, and yes, though it's in broth, it can dry out. We want to cook it gently but thoroughly. No chicken sashimi in the US. And we're going to skim off any scum that rises to the top. Don't worry, you don't lose flavor. The impurities are just denatured proteins that don't actually taste like much. This step keeps your broth clear. But why care about the clarity and aesthetic if it doesn't actually change the taste? After all, this is homemade. The only reason I've found that makes the most sense is that when scum covers the top of the soup, it essentially traps the heat, making it much harder for you to control the temperature, causing you to boil your broth when you want to simmer. Ideally, you would have a large enough pot to keep your chickens completely submerged, which was my mistake, so I removed the excess chicken carcasses at this point, but the pot still ended up way too full. Let's talk about aromatics. Onions are typically used to make the broth sweeter, but whole onions were originally cultivated from either Southwest or Central Asia, as were shallots. I can't find a suitable alternative that was natively grown in Vietnam, as the closest thing would be the Chinese scallion, Allium chinense. Unfortunately, as the name suggests, it was cultivated in China, not Vietnam, and if we're going to make this an actually authentic Vietnamese dish, we must ignore the thousand years of Chinese imperialism in Vietnam. So I'm skipping the alliums. The other aromatic used frequently in pho is ginger. Ginger is found as a cultigen of maritime Southeast Asia, but not specifically Vietnam. Alas, I will not add it to my pho. As for the spices, black cardamom is native to the slopes of the Himalayas, so no black cardamom. Coriander is native to the Mediterranean and Middle East. Cloves are also not native to Vietnam, but the Maluku Islands in Indonesia. And fennel seeds are indigenous to the Mediterranean. None for this pho. Now, cinnamon is found natively in Vietnam, and star anise is native to the northeast of Vietnam. I've toasted them first, and then in they go. I've wrapped them inside some coffee filters so they're easier to fish out later. At this point, I realized that I hadn't salted my broth, so in goes the salt. It's been a couple hours now, so I'm checking the temperature of the chicken. No part of the chicken should be below 165 degrees Fahrenheit, and yes, perfect! The chicken is ready to be removed from the broth. I've done so, and re-added the carcasses I didn't use, and topped off with more water. I'm going to let the broth sit and develop more chickeny flavor as I let the meat cool before I shred it. A few more hours later, and the broth has developed a deeper chicken flavor. I'm tasting it to check and adjust its salt levels. Right now, the broth is still kind of bland, so of course, we add a salty umami bomb in the form of fish sauce, which is traditionally made in Vietnam from anchovies caught off the coast, and salt from the sea. Pho ga is usually served with nuk jam, or fish sauce dipping sauce, on the side. Unfortunately, no garlic, as that was originally cultivated in Central Asia. No bird's eye chilies either, as all peppers originated from Mexico. And as we've mentioned earlier, no ginger. We're going to add boiling water to dissolve some cane sugar, as sugar cane grows native to South and Southeast Asia. We're going to add fish sauce and then some lime, which originated from Southeast Asia. For garnish, we'd normally have bean sprouts, but mung beans were originally domesticated in India, so no bean sprouts. Culantro, or ngagai, is native to Mexico, and as we previously discussed, as our chili peppers. Thai basil is native to Southeast Asia, so that and lime are the only things we'll have to garnish this pho. 
While rice grains are thought to be cultivated in the Yangtze River Basin in China, I can't willingly call this pho without at least having ban pho or the rice noodles, so we're going to include it, especially since the Vietnamese people have been harvesting rice for thousands of years. I bought these from my local Asian market. We're going to boil them in a separate pot until they soften, and then strain them and rinse them with cold water to stop them from sticking together and overcooking. And we're done! Every single one of these ingredients could have been natively found in Vietnam, so it must be the most authentic, right? What makes this pho more authentic than any other variation of pho out there? There's so many different varieties of pho, from northern or southern style pho's and everything in between, to the pho's made from other diasporic Vietnamese who worked with the ingredients they had locally available trying to match the palates that they grew up with, trying to find that taste of home. After all, the cinnamon I got is from a Mexican market and is not the Saigon cinnamon found in Vietnam, and the cane sugar I used is also from Mexico. What makes a version more authentic than another? While I grew up in one of the largest Vietnamese enclaves in the world outside of Vietnam, my taste memory of pho is different, built in some ways by a war that ended in 1975. And with so many of the community displaced, of course our tastes diverged to reflect where we ended up. This bowl of pho, which tastes heavily of chicken and star anise, kind of feels bland, like a revisionist history of Vietnam. It ignores all of the colonial and imperial influences, and all of the trade that has ever happened in the world. It ignores the history of migration of people, or even just the spread of knowledge. In some ways, it felt like I was picking and choosing arbitrarily about what could be included and which could not, because the fact of the matter is, trade has happened for hundreds of thousands of years. Before the French colonized Vietnam, the Vietnamese people actually didn't even really eat beef, or rather, the meat of the water buffalo, as it was more profitable to use the buffalo to tend to the fields, making the meat more tough than palatable. And historically, borders constantly shifted. The Kin people, the most predominant ethnic group of Vietnam, pushed out many of the Khmer people when we took over the Mekong Delta, though obviously some Khmer people still live in Vietnam as Vietnamese citizens, which maybe makes them more Vietnamese than me. I myself wasn't born in Vietnam, but born in Southern California, the child of refugees who came to America while they were still children. I'm American, and ethnically Kin Vietnamese. Am I not an authentic Vietnamese person? But is authenticity even something to strive for? We must ask ourselves, what is authenticity? Authentic to when? Authentic to who? Authenticity demands a basis for comparison, and it always refers to something of the past. Why then is authenticity the goal? So often I hear things like, for the most authentic places, you're looking for a hole in the wall. You want sticky tables, a kid in the background doing homework, and it has to be dirt cheap and with the majority of people dining there to be of that community. That's how you know it's good. Doesn't that make you question why? Why is it that communities of color are often the ones forced to be authentic, to remain authentic to some idealized version of the past? Why is it that we expect people of color to have the best, most authentic flavors, but not pave them for their labor and expertise? Pho is, and always was, a fusion food. And if you look at each ingredient of a particular dish, you'll find that most foods are. But does that make them any less authentic? What do you think?